Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Priya Sipaha. My topic for today is intra-territorial jurisdiction and extra-territorial jurisdiction under Indian Penal Code 1860. First of all, it is necessary to understand the meaning of jurisdiction, which means a power or authority of a court to hear and determine a case to adjudicate and exercise any judicial power in relation to it by taking cognizance of matters presented before the court. There are two kinds of jurisdiction of courts. The first one is inherent jurisdiction, which means that the court is not empowered to try the case. And second one is local jurisdiction, which means the limit of the area in which the court can exercise its power. Jurisdiction defined under IPC and CRPC. Under section 2 of IPC, it deals with the intra-territorial jurisdiction. Section 3 and 4 of IPC deals with extra-territorial jurisdiction. Section 177 of CRPC deals with the ordinary place of inquiry and trial and Section 179 to 185 and 188 of CRPC deals with specific exceptions. Section 2 of IPC deals with intra-territorial jurisdiction which means it makes the court universal in its application to every person in any part of India for every act or omission contrary to the provision of the act. That means any person will be held liable and will be punished if he is committing any crime within the territory of India, he will be held guilty. There are certain terms which need to be understood, which has been mentioned under section 2 of IPC. The first one is every person. Every person is made liable to punishment without distinction of nation, rank, caste or creed, provided the offense with which he is charged has been committed in some part of India. That means the crime must commit within the territory of India by Indians. The next one is foreigner. A foreigner who enters the Indian territories and thus accept the protection of Indian laws virtually gives an assurance of his fidelity and obedience to them and submit himself to their operation. That means a foreigner, a foreign national committing an offense within India can be punished. The leading case related with this are Mubarak Ali versus State of Bombay R versus SO and State of Maharashtra versus Mayor Hans George. In these cases, some foreigner has committed a crime in Indian territory. They were held liable because the crime has been committed within the territory of India. The next concept is corporation. A company can be held liable and punished for criminal offenses. Although there are earlier authorities to the fact that the corporation cannot commit a crime, the general accepted modern rule is that a corporation may be subject to indictment and other criminal process, although the criminal act may be committed through its agent. However, a corporation cannot be imposed corporal punishment for the offense which can be committed by human beings only, for example, murder, perjury, etc. Then within India. Within India expression is defined under Section 2 of IPC, which points out towards the intra-territorial jurisdiction of IPC, which includes the whole land territory of India, the maritime belt of India, which presently extended up to 12 nautical miles in the sea, the whole air space over the area underneath this total area, the maritime belt, which is also known as territorial water, is measured from the appropriate baseline. The next is high seas. High seas are open to all and represent the entire sea space beyond the three miles limit of the shore. This expression includes 
all ocean seas bays channels rivers creeks and water flow low water mark and where great ship could go with the exception only of such places of such ocean and as were within the territory of same country there are certain exceptions to the intra territorial jurisdiction under ipc the first one is foreign sovereign second ambassador third alien enemies third fourth president and governor and fifth one is warship the first exception is foreign sovereigns which means these are the person completely exempted from the jurisdiction of indian criminal court because a sovereign is the highest authority of his nation and he is not amenable of the jurisdiction of other countries he is totally independent and represent the dignity of his country the next is ambassadors certain immunities and privileges have been granted to ambassadors of other countries by the diplomatic privilege act 1964 of england the un privilege and immunity act 1947 are certain example therefore ambassadors are exempted from the jurisdiction of indian criminal court the next one is alien enemies an alien enemy is an individual who due to permanent or temporary allegiance to a hostile power is regarded as an enemy in war time in respect of acts of war alien enemies cannot be tried by criminal court if an alien enemy commits a crime unconnected with war he could be liable under the ipc the military person of alien enemies do not come under the jurisdiction of ordinary criminal courts for the act done connecting with the war however if they commit theft robbery rape etc unconnected with war they shall be tried by the indian criminal courts the next concept is warship the warship entered into the indian sea waters cannot be tried under the ordinary indian criminal court the public international law applies to such men of war then next is president and governors the president and governors of the states are exempted from the jurisdiction of criminal courts by article 361 of indian constitution section 3 and 4 of ipc deals with extra territorial jurisdiction Section three defines that the punishment of offence committed beyond, but which by law may be tried within India. That means any person liable by any Indian law to be tried for an offence committed beyond India shall be dealt within according to the provision of the code for any act committed beyond India in the same manner as if such act has been committed within India. that means if any person is committing any act beyond the territory of india that will be considered as an act which is committed within the territory of india and section 4 says that the crime committed outside india which means when an offence is committed in some other country but the offender is found in india then he may be given up for trial in the country where the offence was committed which means extradition or he may be tried in india which comes under extra territorial jurisdiction what is extradition extradition is basically when a person is surrendered by one state or a country to another of a person desired to be dealt with for crimes of which he has been accused or convicted and which are justifiable in the courts of the other state that means if any person has committed a crime in another country or in another state and he has been escaped in india or in any other country then under extradition it can be sent to that country where the crime has been committed the procedure for securing the extradition from india 
is laid down in Extradition Act 1962. Though extradition is granted in implementation of the international commitment of the state, the procedure can be followed by the courts in deciding whether extradition should be granted send on what terms is determined by the municipal law of the land. The next is Admiralty Jurisdiction. The jurisdiction to try offences committed on the high sea is known as Admiralty Jurisdiction. It is founded on the principle that a ship on the high sea is a floating island belonging to the nation whose flag she is flying. That means Admiral Jurisdiction extended over the offence committed on Indian ships on the high seas and offences committed on foreign ship in Indian territorial water. There are certain provisions under CRPC also related to jurisdiction. Section 177 of CRPC deals with the ordinary place of inquiry and trial. Every offence shall ordinarily be inquired into and tried by the court within whose local jurisdiction it was committed. There are certain provisions related to extraterritorial jurisdiction in CRPC also. The first one is section 179, which means the offence tribal where an act is done or consequence ensues. When an act is an offence by reason of anything which has been done and of a consequence which has ensued, the offence may be inquired into or tried by the court within whose local jurisdiction such thing has been done or such consequences has ensued. Section 188 deals with the offence committed outside India, which state that when an offence is committed outside India, the first thing is by the citizen of India, where on the high seas or elsewhere, the next is by the person not being such citizen on any ship or aircraft registered in India. He may be dealt with in respect of such offence as if it had been committed at any place within India at which he may be found. Receipt of evidence related to offences committed outside India. There are some leading cases which explains the jurisdiction of court in a very proper manner. Generally, the rule is that the court within whose jurisdiction the offender may be found will have jurisdiction in the matter, but it may not always be due so. For example, in Empress versus Bangalad, it was decided the interpretation of the word found, which means that it is used to confer the jurisdiction to the court of a place where the accused is actually found. That means produced before the court and not where the person is discovered. In other words, it would mean that an accused may be discovered by the police at a place not within the jurisdiction of the court inquiring or trying, but that is not the place contemplated by section 188. For the purpose of jurisdiction, it would be the court where he is actually produced or appears which can said to have found him. Next important case is Om Hemrajni versus State of UP. In this it has been held that the victim who has suffered at the hand of accused on a foreign land can complain about the offence to the court otherwise competent which he may find convenient. The convenience is of the victim and not that of the accused. It is the, not the requirement of section 188 that the victim shall state in the complaint as to which place the accused may be found. It is enough to allege that the accused may be found in India. The court where the complaint may be filed and the accused either appears voluntarily pursuant to issue of process or is brought before it involuntarily in execution of warrants would be the competent court within the meaning of section 188 of court 
as the court would find the offense before him when he appears. The finding has to be by the court. It has neither to be by the complainant nor by the police. The section deems the offense to be committed within the jurisdiction of the court where the accused may be found. Let's have a quick revision of jurisdiction under IPC. Section 2 of IPC deals with intraterritorial jurisdiction, which means any person is held liable and will be punished under Section 2 of IPC if he has committed a crime within the territory of India. And Section 3 and 4 deals with extraterritorial jurisdiction. Section 3 states that punishment of offenses committed beyond but which by law may be tried within India. That means no matter the person has committed a crime beyond the territory of India, it will be considered as if that person has committed a crime within the territory of India. Now section four. Section four is crime committed outside India. It deals with the extraterritorial jurisdiction. That means if any person who have committed a crime outside the state or country of India and that person escaped in India, then he may be either treated and given back by extradition or he can be tried under extraterritorial jurisdiction within India. So that is all about the intraterritorial jurisdiction and extraterritorial jurisdiction under criminal law. Thank you for watching. Although this is a precise lecture, but if you want a detailed notes, you can subscribe my website that is priyasipaha.com. Thank you for watching and goodbye.